Good morning from the Elijah List and from Elijah Streams. I'm Steve Schultz. For those of you that may be new, I'm the founder of the Elijah List. We started 23 years ago. So we've been 23 years bringing you the voice of the prophets and every year more prophets emerge and every year we we have watched and come to know more prophets and, uh, and you know additional there's literally i mean when we started this there were like four or five people we would rotate between and now there are hundreds of people who prophesy and again for those of you who are new there are prophets and then those are gifted in prophesying and while some people call me a prophet i'm really i see myself as one who prophesies a lot I can prophesy very accurately, but I don't necessarily put that label on myself, but all of our speakers, all of our guests have been uh, really prophets who are recognized for their gift. And uh, so all of that. So I'm going to bring on Katie here in just a minute. What else did I want to say? I, I want to say this to those of you that uh, have seen different kinds, men and women, young and old, and and you'll see an emphasis of one thing or another because that's where this prophet's gift is emphasized. So people write to me and say, well, how can this be true? If this other prophet you had on said this. And just so you know how this works, we don't try to make every single prophet agree 100% on anything. So for instance, God told Kat that she was to celebrate. And I guarantee you Kat is a praying woman and she visits the Lord in heaven and he walks through her door or uh, through her wall, whatever. And Kat prays all the time. But she won't necessarily come off as an avid intercessor, but she'll tell you, the Lord said, it's done, now start celebrating. Whereas we're going to bring on Katie Souza, and Katie Souza's place in the ministry in the body of Christ is she's an avid um, fighter in the spirit. She's an intercessor. She's got healing gifts. I'll talk about that in a second. And uh, so you'll hear her say, we have to do this work. We have to, we have to focus in. We've got to fight this. We have to not stop praying. And you'll say, well, which is right, Kat or Katie? And the answer is yes. They are absolutely both right. It's their particular angle that the Lord is having them teach. And Katie can comment on any of that just a minute, in just a minute. So without further ado, let's bring on Katie Souza. And here she comes. There she is. Hey, Katie. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing real good. Some people may not know that among the people who um, tried to get us, or should say, uh, encouraged me to get on television, you were one of the main two. Uh, we also had, you know, at our office, we had um, Dennis, um, Dennis and his son, Dennis Wilhelm and his son, Michael, who tried for years to get me on television. We have a studio. You were the first one to really talk about the details of the studio. And I just wanted to recognize you for that. And uh, you, you are very much responsible for this. Other people, Sunil and my brother Warren, were, were telling us, you need to get on the live shows and right now. And so all of those people, you don't know the people who you have influence over in your life, folks, as you watch this, how much you're uh, encouraging someone to go into this or that. You don't know how much you they'll look at that for the rest of their life and realize where that came from. So anyway, thank you for that, Katie. I appreciate it. Let me just say one more thing before I have you jump in here. I'm not letting you talk at all. <laughs> Katie right. has Katie has one of the most profound gifts of healing I've ever seen. She, uh, she's done a couple of Elijah's conferences with us, and she brings this big old metal detector. You can't see it. It's, it's really, I can't do it that way. Big old metal detector. And she'll pray for people who have metal in their back or rods and things, and they don't, every not every single one, gets healed, but uh, uh, in my view, it was either half to two thirds where all of a sudden the, the metal detector ah. wouldn't wouldn't go. That was your dog, but at least it wasn't my dog. So we'll <laughs> So Katie, you are gonna talk with us about um, the fire of God and the elections and what we need to do. And I'm just gonna introduce it like this. You began to prepare for this about eight years ago. Why don't you jump off there and then just go for it. Yeah, you know, and, and again, like you were just saying, you know, Kat saying celebrate what's happened because she knows in the spirit that, you know, the president is going to stay in office for a second term. And then people like me are like, OK, so now let's make that celebration viable by battling go. and warring for the truth of that prophetic word to, to manifest. 
That's good. Yeah. And so it harmonizes very perfectly. And That's the good. revelation I'm going to share today, uh, Steve, and um, I'm really grateful you are, you did step out and do the media like we all encouraged you because you're doing such a great job of it. And people really need what you're bringing to the table Thank to you. help Thank them grow in the spirit and also to inform them. Um, the revelation I'm going to bring today, uh, I've actually been cultivating this for eight years. So this isn't just something that, you know, I got a revelation about a couple of weeks ago and I moved into it. You know, the Lord uh, revealed this strategy to me eight years ago. So over all of these years, I've been building the authority and dominion for this revelation to the point now where God happened to use it on a governmental level. That's wow. the thing. God will give us insight, right? But we're, it's up to us to nurture it, to grow it, uh, you know, in partnership with the Lord so that we can have a higher level of authority in that place. Good. So it is, this revelation is about demonic serpents. And as you're going to hear the story, when we released this revelation and God, God enabled me to apply it to the situation in the elections, immediately after that, um, the glitch that's now being talked about um, was discovered in Michigan. So let me wow. tell you what happened from the beginning. God began to show me eight years ago about demonic serpents. And he began to give me scripture to fortify the fact that we have to go after these beasts and we have to remove them from every area that they are putting their influence and their oppression on. Uh, Jesus talks about in Luke 10, he says, behold, I've given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall any wise harm you. Now, no. is he talking about serpents in the natural? Well, it could be part of that. We see an example of Paul having dominion over a venomous viper. When he got bit on the island of Malta by a poisonous snake, he shook it off and he was left unharmed. So, but in this context, when we look at Luke 11, Jesus is talking about demonic spirits that manifest in the form of serpents and scorpions. And we know that because he just sent out the 70 on a missionary trip. They came back and they said to Jesus, wow, even the demons submitted to us in your name. And that's when Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from the sky. And I've given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and wow. nothing shall in any wise harm you. Wow. So in, in context, when we look at that scripture, he's talking about demon spirits that manifest themselves as serpents. And are we surprised at this? The very first manifestation of a demonic power in this earth was Satan manifesting as what? A serpent That's, in the garden. Yeah. And even all the way through scriptures to the end of the book, in the book of Revelations, uh, Satan is called that old serpent. So there wow. are indeed devils, demonic spirits, evil entities that operate and work and manifest and appear as serpents. Now, in the Great Commission, in Matthew 16, Jesus gives a commission to every single believer, not just Katie Souza, not just Steve Schultz, but every single believer. He says, go out into all the earth, baptize the nations in my name, teach the gospel, lay hands on the sick and they will recover, raise the dead. And then he also says this, and pick up serpents. Wow. Now, this is the commission to every believer. We're all supposed to be, quote, picking up or taking up serpents. What does that mean? When we look at that phrase, take up or pick up, it is the Greek word iro. It means this, to uh, that would, which attaches itself to anything. So this means if we're supposed to take up serpents, that means these serpents attach themselves to anything. Anything and everything in our lives, our physical bodies, our families, our businesses, our households, our ministries, our nation, wow. our elections. Okay. And we're supposed to take them up. We're supposed to remove them. We're supposed to remove them from anything they are attached to. That's the call for every believer, not just for some, because it's contained in the Great Commission. And the Lord began to show me how these serpents control people and situations. Do you remember what Jesus and John the Baptist both called the Pharisees? Oh, you brood of vipers. Vipers. Why would he, yeah, why would he do that? Because he's trying to say that these men were being controlled by demonic serpents. 
And wow. part of their agenda was to come against the Christ because they came against Jesus and persecuted him, but also to come against anything that's holy and righteous. And that's why I believe that these, one of the reasons why the Python spirit in particular has been used in these elections by the enemy to cause illegal gains for the side of unrighteousness. Wow, yeah. This is, yeah, this isn't a war, um, Stephen, I know you know this, but this isn't a war between parties, between left and right. It is That's a war right. between, it's a war between altars. It's a war between darkness and light, between righteousness and holiness and evil. And one party represents, I mean, I'm not trying to say that the, that the, that the Republicans or the right are perfect. No one is perfect. Mm -hmm. They have their faults too. But their agenda represents that which is closest to the biblical text. Mm. Pro-life, pro-marriage, um, all of these pro things. Pro-Israel, all the Israel pro things. Pro-Israel, absolutely. Yeah. And so the left is representing the party that is against or anti against the holiness and righteousness of scripture. And that's what the brood of viper Pharisees, they came against Jesus themselves. They came against that which is holy and righteous. And so as I, we came close to these elections, I'm a part of a national prayer line. This prayer line has been praying every single day, seven days a week since wow. 2016, before the president was elected and brought into office. Wow. So wow. they have thousands of people on this line that have developed a high level authority to pray governmental prayers for the president and his team and for the for the conservative party. Can you comment real quick on what you mean by they've developed an authority? What do you mean they've developed an authority? For those that are the, new to this. Okay, so in Genesis, after um, after the flood subsided and Noah exited the ark, God spoke to him. He said, behold, I've given you dominion over everything in the earth the sea, the sky, and all the creepy crawly things. Now take <laughs> dominion. We have been bequeathed or commissioned with the ability and the, and the authority to take dominion over everything in this planet. That means, you know, dominion over our families, dominion over our bodies, dominion over our finances, dominion over businesses, churches, and also dominion over our nation, our politics over the things that govern the laws that govern our country we are supposed yeah. to have dominion to be able to usher in righteousness and holiness but it takes a development of dominion like you just talked about how in your meetings you've seen me come and administrate metal miracles right. and that you know 50 percent to two-thirds of people that um, came up for the healing had a legitimate healing tested by a metal detector that the metal disappeared well right. i didn't just get that one day I developed <laughs> that dominion over years. You developed authority to get rid of metals, right? Over years. Correct. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And that's what we're all called to be. We can't see people just say, God is sovereign. He's going to do whatever he chooses. Okay, look, God is, is in partnership. He's given us his creation, his children, his bride, dominion over the earth. And we are supposed to exercise it and grow our authority in our partnership with God. We right. can't just believe that God's just, we can just sit back, okay, God, do it, make everything happen. God gives us a mandate and we execute. And that's important because that's what we need to do. And that's what I'm talking about. Well, today. and plus, is, you know, isn't it also a point that Christ is in us, the Father's in us, the Holy Spirit's in us, we are in Him, He's in us, they're in each other, we're all in. And so when we're operating, we're operating with literally the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in us, who is God. Jesus is in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I am the Father. The Father is in you. And Jesus said that. So, isn't our even when we're doing it ourselves, we're not really doing it ourselves? No, absolutely not. We're taking the power, the supernatural powers, and presence and authority of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Father that has been implanted in us through the ability, through us being able to have it because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. 
And we're using that authority. We're growing it, growing in our understanding about how to administrate with it through all, through study of the word, through getting in the presence, through our prayer and through our worship. And the more we do that, the more we connect with what God has already implanted in us. Amen. And the more we are able to then release it into this earthly realm. See, it takes a, uh, it takes a body to take dominion. That's why Jesus came in a body. Amen. Go ahead. That's good. Okay, remember, remember, if my people pray, I will hear them yeah, from heaven yeah. and heal their land. And the right. kingdom of heaven is taken by force and the forceful lay hold of it. That's good. So yes. we got to, we, we, we will never, and I, I told you this offline, there's always people almost every day who would say, if God is sovereign, if God said that he wants Trump to be to serve a second term, then why should we pray? It doesn't make any sense. And one, one day I just said, I'm out of here. And she didn't even Look, linger to see what the answer was. Well, the prophets have, have, have spoken. They can't, and let's say, oh, are, you know, maybe some of them are wrong, but are all of them wrong? Right. I mean, we have people that have lived a holy life and uh, are seriously in the presence of the Lord, Judge Sheets, you know, Kat, Kerr, uh, Chuck Pierce, people like that, um, you know, have Johnny prophesied. Johnny Enlow, Charlie yeah. Champ, they just keep going. Prophesied that Trump was going to was going to do this, so we need to come into agreement with the prophets. It says that we war, we war yeah. with the prophetic word. So we have to take the prophetic word and we have to war with it. It just cool. sometimes pr prophecy doesn't just come to pass. That's why pe why people don't see manifestation. I don't want to get too far off because I want to get yeah, sure. back to these serpents because that's the important message. Right. But you know the thing is is that that's why people don't see their promises manifest. God gives them a promise and they go, "Okay, God, yeah, you're going to do it." They never war with that prophecy. And that's why they don't see the manifestation. And then years later, they get disappointed and bitter at God and blame him for not doing it when it was their responsibility to war with the prophetic. That's good. Really good. Okay, so this is what happened with these serpents to get back to that story. So God began to show me all the things that I just talked about. And if you just tuned in, I encourage you, please go back and watch from the beginning because I'm building doctrine so that nobody has a question about it. But one of the demonic serpents that we deal with is the spirit of Python. Now, in Acts 16 is a story of a woman that had a spirit of divination and she was following Paul and Silas around saying, these men are here to show you the way to the most high God. In other words, she looked like she was a holy woman. She's saying something good. These guys are you know, here to talk to you about the Lord. But it said Paul was grieved. And after many days, he cast that spirit out of that woman. Okay, so now Paul was grieved, meaning he recognized that Something that was claiming to be holy and righteous wasn't. This is what's happening right now with the political parties. The other side is claiming that they're the ones that are treating people with equity, that they're the ones that are going to increase our economy, that they're the ones that are going to take care of the American people. They're, uh, they're presenting themselves as holy and righteous, but we can feel the grieving in our spirit because it doesn't, but then all of their political positions don't line up with the scriptural text. Right. So it says that Paul cast her out. Now it says that this woman with the spirit of divination made much, quote, much gains for her masters, meaning she was responsible for being able to make them wealthy, to being able to make them gain in every area of their life, in favor, in influence, in authority, and in power. Now, that word divination there, because she was possessed with the spirit of divination, it has a one word meaning in the Greek. It means this, python. Really? It was a, yes, python. Go check my work, go to the Thayers, go to the Strongs. Okay, it means python, meaning the spirit that was on her, that was speaking through her and acting like it was holy. These men are here to show you the way to God. And that was the one that was in charge of bringing her master's illegal gains was a python serpent spirit. Now, I've worked, I've operated in this revelation for, as I said, eight years. And I've seen when I broke pythons off of people's finances that were, see what Python does is it brings illegal gains. But what it does to a believer is because it's a python, it squeezes the life out of your gains, your legitimate mm. legal gains. Wow. And I've broken that spirit off of many people. When I broke it off my own ministry years ago, um, within two weeks, we received a hundred thousand dollar offering. Wow. I don't look at that as a coincidence. I look at that as an answer to a strategy that was released against a demonic spirit, an answer to prayer. Wow. Okay, so we know this works, and I've seen it work. I've seen churches hit revival when a python was released off of them. I've seen 
So many physical miracles. I've seen a woman that had four stage cancer. A serpent comes off of her. She's healed instantly of a walnut sized cancer in her breast. Really? I, I seen a woman that had had to drag herself up of her, her condo stairs every night because she had bone on bone in her knees and no cartilage, no nothing, rheumatoid arthritis. As soon as the, the serpents, remember, we're supposed to take them off of anything. We're supposed to take up serpents. As soon as we removed the serpents, we took them up off of her knees. Her cartilage grew back. The, the rheumatoid arthritis completely was removed. She's running up and down the stairs of the stage, <laughs> completely wow. healed. I saw a wow. guy that had it in his eye. He had a growth growing over his eye nine times in his life when he was a little boy. He had to have it lasered out. And when a, when a python spirit, when a, when, a, when a serpent snake came off of him, that growth that was on his eye dissolved. It left. And he's never had to grow back again in his Crazy. life. Wow. Okay, you've seen those kinds of miracles worked when I've been at your meetings. That's so right. this should not shock or surprise anyone. But what, a hard pe what people have a hard time realizing is that these serpents can do these kinds of things. So I've seen all kinds of fruit with the removal of these spirits. But I've never um, associated it with the presidential elections until now. What happened was, is on November the 6th, that morning... I was going to go uh, pray on the national prayer line. And I said, God, you got to give me a word. I don't want to just pray the normal prayers. I want to pray a strategy that's going to be a game changer. Okay. And I got online and the Lord told me, I want you to remove the Python because this Python spirit is causing, remember, she said, it said that she had a spirit of divination and she brought much gains for her masters. They were illegal gains. And the Lord says, this Python spirit is causing the opposing party to have illegal gains in the mail-in wow. ballots and in the electronic ballot boxes. And you need it's to really remove really clear, him. isn't it? It's so clear. It's so clear. And, and look, the thing that people don't realize is in this story, it's not just one woman that had that Python spirit. That whole region of people worshipped a demon god called Pythos. So this is a national level demonic spirit that's at work throughout the nation. Now, here's the thing, Steve, is Genesis 3 says the serpent was the most craftiest beast of, this, of the field. Do you know that even in the natural, snakes are master hiders. They are masters of camouflage technology. I, I want you to think about it. Snake scales are, are there. They can totally blend in to their environment okay you can walk through the desert in arizona and you wouldn't even know that you're about to step on a deadly rattlesnake until it shakes its tail and you hear it because its scales blend in with the sand they blend in with the rocks you go out to the east coast and, and you'll be raking leaves um fall autumn leaves different colored and you won't even know there's a snake right underneath those leaves that's hiding there because the scales on the snake match the multicolor of the leaves. Snakes are masters of technology, camouflage technology. They're masters at hiding. So God showed me that morning that there was a Python spirit that was causing the opposing party to have illegal gains in the balloting boxes, wow. in the electronic boxes and the mail-in boxes. And that it had been hidden so well that people couldn't see it. And at the same time, because pythons squeeze the life out of things, it was not only causing illegal gains for the opposing party, it was squeezing out the legal gains for the president. Now, Crazy. right after we prayed that prayer, and I'm going to tell you the strategy in a minute about how we prayed for the removal of this spirit, I, got, I started getting texts and emails, people sending me videos of the governor in Michigan announcing that they had discovered a glitch, a glitch. Really? Yes. In the electronic mail, uh, in the electronic balloting system that call, and she says this on a video. Um, you could probably, I, I'll send it to you and your guys can post sure. it in the chat sure. for people sure. to watch. This came to me right after we removed Python. Okay. Wow. She said that it caused, um, votes in the electronic ballots for Trump to go to Biden, 6,000 of them, 6,000. Wow. Now I was on the news today 
Oh no, I'm I'm sorry. I received a a text with a link today of an interview that Fox Business News Maria Bartiromo did with Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell was a um, assistant district attorney. She's Michael Flynn's uh, lawyer, and she's now um, now she's Trump on lawyer. the Trump legal team. Right. Sydney Powell came on yesterday and she said now, and Maria Bartiromo said this on her interview. She said that it's public record now that this software, it's called Dominion Software, that was used in Michigan is also on the ballot machines, the program used in the ballot machines in 2,000 jurisdictions. 2,000 in 30 states. Now, if you do 30 states, 2,000 jurisdictions, even if it's like 6,000 votes that they had in Michigan. That's a game changer for the president. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it this is. happened right after we removed Python. We unwound him from that hidden place where he hides, where he's causing illegal gains to come in for his masters and squeezing out the legal gains of the president. And it's interesting. Now, we're uh, supposed to be taking dominion over the serpents, and the serpents taking dominion over us before you uncovered it. Dominion it's true. is going away. Yeah. We're losing our dominion. That's why Jesus said, and in, in, that's why he said in the Great Commission to every believer, you're supposed to take up serpents because he knew how sneaky these serpents were, how widespread and prevalent they were, and, and how much they are affecting everything from the littlest things in your life to our national security and our national elections. Okay. This is, this is big. Now, I'm going to tell you more about what ha what's happened now since then, but let me first tell you about the strategy to get rid of them. The first thing that we, we did on the prayer call is we released the fire of God. Why? Because fire drives serpents out of hiding. Oh, good. Where's the proof of that? That is in Acts 28, where Paul has been through a shipwreck, a storm. Sound familiar? He's mm -hmm. been through a, a terrible storm that's literally shipwrecked and destroyed the ship he's on. Okay, that's what's happening to this country right now. He gets he he swims ashore from the shipwreck to the island of Malta. It's a cold night. He gathers a bundle of sticks. Little does he realize that while picking up these sticks, he's picking he's picked up a poisonous viper and he's carrying it around with him. Imagine that having a bundle of sticks in your arms and there's a poisonous viper in it and you don't even know it's there because right. it's a master of camouflage technology. Mm. It looks just yeah. like the sticks because serpents are crafty. The craftiest beasts of the field. They are, you know, hiders. They know how to hide and he's carrying it around with them. Just like our a balloting system this Dominion software has been carrying around this snake and we didn't know because it was hidden there. But the scripture says that when Paul threw that bundle of sticks on the fire, the heat of the fire drove that serpent out of its hiding place. Now it bit him. It struck back. It did backlash, but he shook it off and was unaffected by it. And he lived. Even the islanders were shocked. They were like, wow, I, I, we thought for sure this guy was going to die. We thought he was a murderer because he got bit. And now, and, but now he's, you know, now we think he's a God because he's not dying. And then what happened was this revival broke out because he went and started praying for everybody on that, on that island. They all got healed. <laughs> that was a good story too. Yeah. The fire it is. And the fire of God is what drives these snakes out of hiding. I had a friend of mine once who, who called me and said, I just talked to a friend of mine who's a firefighter, a firefighter. And he told me that the worst thing that they deal with during a fire, a forest fire, is not the flames sometimes. Sometimes it's the snakes that are really slithering away from the fire because they're so afraid of fire. They run for their life from the fire at the at the firefighters. Wow. Snakes hate fire. The fire of God drives these serpents out of their hiding place. Do you remember when when um John the Baptist, when John the Baptist was baptizing people in the Jordan in Matthew 3, the Pharisees showed up and he said, oh, you brood of vipers. And he said, repent for one is coming that's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And he's wow. going to separate the chaff from the wheat 
and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So as he spoke a, 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 a holy warning of judgment against these brood of viper men, these men who were, who were controlled by demonic serpents, he was saying to them, look, Jesus is coming. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You need to repent so you can receive it. He's going to separate the chaff from the wheat and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When we release the fire of God, we're releasing uh, an unquenchable fire that burns up the chaff and, and God preserves the wheat. What is that? The wheat is those righteous, holy precepts, even in the political realm that match up with his holy writ, his word of God that are good and pure. And then the chaff are those things that pretend to be, they, they're clinging to the wheat, but they pretend to be those things that are part of the wheat, holy and righteous, but they're really, they're really rubble. They're really waste. They're really the unholy and profane thing. And Jesus said, I will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And of course, who was he saying that to? Oh, you brood of vipers. We have to release the fiery presence of God to get rid of these serpents. And we also have to take them into court. And I'll explain why. It says in that Acts 16 scripture, that when Paul, that that woman with the spirit of divination brought her masters much gains. And then when Paul was grieved, he knew that she wasn't really as holy and righteous as what her words were saying. He cast that spirit out of her. And it says, when her masters saw that the hopes of their gains was gone, they drug Paul and Silas into the marketplace, the place where trials are held. Wow. So there's a lot going on here. First, that's in the Amplified Classic. They drug them into the marketplace. That is the public forum. And it says they began to accuse Paul and Silas. These men are here teaching us doctrines that, that, you know, that, that are not of our people. They began to accuse them in public of things that were not true. Paul and Silas were bringing the purity and the holiness and righteousness of scripture of the word of Jesus Christ. And they were accusing them of being in sin and disrupting their region. That's what's happening in public right now with the president. He's being accused of doing this, accused of doing that, accused of doing things that are untrue and not righteous and, and that are not true at all. And they were doing that, what? In the marketplace, in the public forum, the places where trials are held. Right now, trials happening in the public eye, in yeah. the media and everything else. They're holding court on the president. But guess what? Because they've, they've dared to go and do this in court, we can go to a higher court. We can go to the courts of heaven and we can come against those charges where, you know, and we can bring a righteous decree against them from the heavenly realms. Look, we have a right to bring these serpents into the heavens courts. Why? Because when Jesus said you, you can trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the uh, power of the enemy and nothing shall anyways harm you, that word harm means a criminal to break the law in some way. That's the um, Brown, Drivers, and Briggs uh, concordance, meaning that these serpents are criminals. They've broken the law. They might be dragging us into court, dragging the president into court and accusing him falsely and accusing us falsely of doing things, saying, oh, he's, he's you know, not for, for Hispanic people. He's not for the black people. He's not for this. He's not for that. He won't support you. He won't help you. But we have the right to go to the higher court, not the court of public opinion, not the court in the media, not the, not the court of the world, but the higher court of heaven, because they are, quote, criminals that will harm us. They have broken the law. So on the national prayer call, in agreement with how many people were on there, there's thousands of people on that prayer line every day. We took this spirit of Python to court. We released the fire of God against that spirit. And then that's when shortly after that, the, the lady who heads up the election system in Michigan came on and we'll put that video in your chat as soon as I send that's it to good. your guys. That's good. Um, and announced that they had discovered a glitch. That it's affected, so that caused, yeah, that caused 6,000 Trump votes to be recorded as Biden votes. So you have, you've been studying this for a long time, about 1,500 of you on that call. Was that what, about how many? And, yes, and, 
Right. God revealed that it was a Python spirit. He just told you this is the this is what you've been looking for. It's Python that's covering up this secret thing. You didn't know what it was. You knew to take out Python. You didn't know it was going to discover a glitch in machines. Yeah, see, you I just, didn't know that, but I was right. told specifically, Steve, to pray that the Python would be judged and un and unwound from the electronic ballot machines and okay. the mail-in ballots. That's all okay. I was told, and we obeyed that. And okay. I didn't know how it was going to manifest, but then it did. And and since that time, uh, Steve, it has grown and grown. Uh, I'm going to uh, read to can, Do I have time to just share with yes, you yes, something that Sidney Powell sure. said? Sure. Okay, so she said uh, this machine is in 2,000 jurisdictions in 30 states. Okay, she, Sydney Powell, used to be district attorney, but now she's uh, assistant district attorney. Now she's on the president's legal team. And she says now they have enough evidence to open up a criminal investigation. She says a man by the name of Admiral Peter Neppinger he is the owner and the president and on the board of a company called Smartmatic that is the creators of Dominion software. And she says, this man is also now listed on the Biden transition team. She... Okay, now she said this also. She said that she has proof and she says this. She said, I don't say anything unless I can prove it. She said that this man was fully briefed on this software. It has been used in other countries. It has been used to uh, uh, secure elections in other countries that would benefit the United States. It was sold overseas to other countries so that they could control their elections. She say she also has evidence. She says evidence is coming to her so fast. It's quote, like a fire hose. That's she. what she said, that it's like a fire hose. She said millions of Americans have written in Hundreds of thousands have reported the fraud that they witnessed. He said, she said this software, they have now discovered her team and her team of, of technical experts have now identified the exact ag algorithm that was used to modify votes from Trump to Biden. She wow. says that these machines now, they can read the signature on an electronic ballot and change it. They can... Uh, cause the machine to be in real time to where they can watch the results coming in in real time. And then they can upload vo votes in real time, which is what they did. That's why we saw the surge of votes in Michigan yeah. overnight where we all woke up and 123 votes were for Biden and not a single one for Trump. 123,000 right? 123, or something. 123,000. Yeah, that's yeah. statistically impossible that not right. one of those votes would be for Trump. Right. Then it says this. She also has a sworn statement from someone who knew how this software works from the beginning, how it was designed to work, and was there when things were shutting down in, really? in, and, and when it was put into play. She says that these, this software can also has a, the ability for people to stick a thumb drive into the machine and upload software through it to be remotely accessed from the internet and even be controlled from places like Germany and Valenzuela and to shift votes in real time. They have evidence of this. This is not my opinion. Now, people might say, you're a total Trumper. I don't want to listen to you. Look, I'm just sticking up for righteousness and holiness. I'm going with the party that aligns itself to the word of God. And go. I think that every believer should do the same. Right. I agree. Well, how can the people pray then? And do you want to lead? Uh, do, do you want people to uh, join the fight? Or is this one over and they're supposed to join a different fight? How do, how do you want us to pray? Remember, the Great Commission, Jesus said it to all believers, we are to take up serpents. We are all okay. responsible for being a part of this fight. And we, as, we re, as we release the fire of God, I'm going to take us on to the court. Okay. And then as we continue to release the fire of God, it's going to do what it did for Paul. Um, when he was carrying around a deadly viper and didn't even know it. That's what the election machines, are. We, they've been there carrying around this python and we didn't even know it until we released the fire on it. Judge didn't in court, released the fire on it. And then it was exposed because when Paul threw that 
bundle of sticks on the fire, it drove that serpent out of its hiding place. Wow. So we're going to go to court together. But listen, we, we all need to come together as one. Do not try to go after this python on your own. The right. simple way you can do this is, you know, get my fire soaker on my website or just play a fire song. Play a fire song in your house, like all consuming fire. Put it on repeat. Sing that song. And as you do, decree that the fire of God is going out to unwind these serpents. We already started this process. Because we did this, the glitch was discovered. And then since then, according to Sidney Powell, evidence has come in like a, quote, fire hose. <laughs> and so as we continue, see serpents, when they unwind, they, like, if you lift up a rock and a serpent's underneath it, it'll run away from you and go hide under another rock. We got to keep the fire up so that we drive them completely off so that they can't hide, that the evidence can't be hidden, that the testimonies can't be hidden, that the witnesses can't be hidden or hurt, that, that every bit of evidence will come into light, that the Supreme Court, the highest court here in this world, will see it and that they will adjudicate and they will release a verdict on it to do something, whatever that is, I don't know, but they will do something to switch the direction of this tide. So that's a simple way for everyone to get involved. Just play a fire song for the next week on repeat and sing to it all the time. If we all that's do good. that, we're going to see a miracle happen and we're going to see that's the fulfillment good. of the prophetic word about the president. That's really good. That's really okay. good. Now that's something you did. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you have something, and then we're going to go into the court. No, I mean, I, I, I just because of time, I'm going to just let you go. I'm not going to ask any more questions. Let's go okay. for it. All right. So we're going to go into the Daniel 7 court now, and I'll tell you why. Because it talks about in Daniel 7 that the throne where the judge of all the earth, the Ancient of Days, sits on has flaming wheels of fire on the throne and that fire streams forth from his throne into the nations. And this is the place where it says where all of the dominion of the beasts were judged and taken away. So we're going oh. into that court because as we, as we ask the court to summon this Python spirit into the court, that it's going to be judged and that fiery streams will be released from the court of heaven to burn away all of the sin and to expose and drive out these demonic spirits from their hiding place. So they can, can't keep trying to hide all the evidence and that Sydney will keep on having evidence come into her like a fire hose. So father in the name of Jesus, mm. as I pray in agreement with the body and the family of Christ right now, mm. I, as an officer of this court, step it's into good. my governmental jur jurisdiction mm -hmm. right now. And we go into the Daniel 7, Ancient of Days court. And in Daniel 7, verse 9, it says that Daniel kept looking until thrones were placed for the assessors who assessed the case with the judge and the Ancient of Days, God, the Eternal Father. And he takes his seat. And that his throne is like fiery flame its wheels burning with fire and a stream of fire comes before him. And as the judge is seated and the court is in session, the books are open. Lord, we ask you right now mm. in the name of Jesus in agreement prayer that you would release a subpoena, a summons to bring in the Python spirit that has been hiding and at work to bring illegal gains in the electronic ballot boxes and the mail-in ballots that you would bring that spirit into court. We ask that you summon and subpoena them now in Jesus' name. And yes, that Lord. same spirit who is not only bringing illegal gains in the ballots, but also squeezing out the legal gains of the president, which means of righteousness and holiness being established in this nation to be brought in to face these charges that the court will bring against them. We ask that the court would adjudicate according to Jesus, what he's done on the cross, where the Bible says that the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. That is the very first prophecy about Christ. And we ask that the court adjudicate according to that biblical truth, 
and that prophecy that Jesus defeated the serpent mm. on the cross. And we ask that as, as the books are opened on the destinies of America, yes, that Lord. all of the righteous and holy requirements and precepts and positions and prophetic about America be read out loud in the court and yes, that Lord. those things that God has intended for this nation be would manifest and take place, including the, the placement of a righteous and chosen by God president into the White House. We yes, ask Lord. that this spirit be judged right now in the name of Jesus. And we release the fire of God, fire mm. of God. He yes, says that fire, judgments will stream forth from your yes, throne, Lord. God. Yes, Go, Lord. Lord, release your fire as we pray release together fire, in Lord. agreement all yes, over Lord. this country, onto the yes, electronic Lord. ballot boxes, onto the mail-in yes, ballots, onto all of the yes. evidence to unwind and drive out this Python spirit from its hiding place in our yes, elections Lord. now in the name of Jesus. Yes, we come against this Python spirit in the name of Jesus through the name of Jesus and the fire of God right yes, now Lord. in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, and we ask, Lord, that every bit of evidence be preserved it be purified and we would be brought whole without interruption, without twisting or turning into the Supreme Court and that the case would be heard and the fire of God would come upon the Supreme Court. Mm, and if they're yes, carrying Lord. any serpents themselves, those serpents will be driven out so that right. they would make a holy and righteous judgment based on the evidence and the evidence alone. We collectively yes, right now together release fire of God, fire of God, yes, fire, 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 fire of God, fire of God, fire of God in the name Lord. of Jesus, fiery judgments, yes, serpent Lord. come out of hiding. We throw fire that bundle Lord. of sticks, that evidence pile onto the fire and the fire will drive out that serpent from its hiding place. Yes, he Lord. might try to backbite and to bite like he did Paul, but Paul shook it off and he was left unharmed. And that's what we decree for the president, for the righteous the right and the conservative party in the name of Jesus now. Father, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Ooh, yes, and we Lord. ask that you strengthen the president. Yes, Give Lord. Give a fire on them to drive off the serpents that are trying to squeeze the life out of them and the life yes, out Lord. of their ballots. We caught the thief in the act. Right. We know we did because when we prayed this, the glitch was discovered. So we expect now sevenfold return on yes, ballot Lord. counts right now because when you catch the thief in the act, he has to repay sevenfold. We decree for seven times that he stole from the legal ballots from the president. He'll get sevenfold back in return in the name of Jesus now. Yes, Lord. You, yes, Lord. You, and we That's anoint funny. every person that is online right now with a mantle of fire so that as they sing the fire songs and decree fire scriptures over this next week, that there, that a mighty wave of fire from the court will be released to burn through this nation, to drive out every demonic serpent that has tried to cause illegal gains for their masters. And we ask for the angels of fire to accompany and be released as officers of the court from the heavenly courtroom to burn with yes, fire Lord. and to go to yes, strategic Lord. places where that demonic spirit is still hidden and still active, bringing illegal gains in for mm. their masters. And we thank you, Lord, that you are going to use this video to go viral so that people all over the world yes, can Lord. all join in agreement to go and decree fire together to see victory and the prophetic yes, word about the office yes, of the president coming to pass in this nation in Jesus yes, name in Jesus name in Jesus name yes that's powerful that's powerful so people get your get your music about the fire of God I'm going to go looking for my own music any whatever music you like as long as it's about the fire about the fire, right? And you know, and if they need help, they can go on my website and get the serpent and the soul. Tell them what's your website. Give your website. It's katiesusa.com. I'm only saying it's, this not to make money or to promote myself, no, but, you, but it's just go a good guide. Yeah. They can so download good. it electronically onto their phone. That's really good. Katie, this is powerful. This is so good. And and for those of you watching, this may be the first time you've ever seen this kind of thing, taking a case to court. But I'm telling you, I've been involved in some of these, a few of them, and it's powerful. Every time we do it, something happens that you can observe. So watch for things. Even in your own life, watch for something to shift as a result of this. And watch the news 
not too much of the news because you get because they'll depress you. But watch it and just see what suddenly shifts because we're doing that. So, Katie, thank you so much. I wish we had more time. We'd stay on there, but uh, thank you so much. You guys get to her site and uh, get as much of the materials as you want. Please be remember to support her ministry as well. All right, everybody, thank you so much. We'll be back here in 24 hours. Kat is on tomorrow. She's on every Wednesday right now. And uh, thank you so much. Be sure to share this with all your friends. Okay, everybody, we'll see you again in, in 24 hours. Bye-bye.